grateful to have this opportunity. Um, great leadership starts from the top. So um, from our owners, Lisa, uh, Jenny and Dawn, on down to Alicia and to Lisa, um, just strong, powerful women. Um, I just am super grateful for the opportunity that they have entrusted me, empowered me, believed in me, um, supported me, and the ability to lead this team. Um, and a big congratulations to Dan and Mary um, and on his next journey of retirement and just grateful for the opportunity to learn and sit by alongside of him. And um, obviously this, you know, happened very quickly, but um, just super honored and, you know, appreciative that um, I had the support um, from the team, from the organization. Um, they see something within me and, you know, I'm, I'm entrusted to lead this team and I mean, it doesn't go unseen that unseen that the they are instilling this confidence within me. And, you know, today was a good day, short and sweet. You know, we're preparing for a game. So that was the focus. You know, we had to transition to progress. And within that is um, um, important that we are intentional about our day to day. And today, um, yesterday was about us. Today was about our preparation and our focus and um, we were sharp, we were on point, and um, it was overall a very good day. Fantastic, Coach. Thank you so much. Just as a quick reminder for those who may have joined us late, we ask one quick question and one brief follow-up. We'll circle around uh, if we still have time at the end. That way we can get to everybody who has a question. If you do have a question, hit reactions down at the bottom and raise your hand. We'll make sure we get to you. Uh, Percy, why don't you go ahead and kick us off, Percy? Awesome. Hey, Coach. Can Congratulations, that's just fantastic. Thank you. Hey, I'm just wondering, um, just um, uh, the priorities that you would like to establish this year and how will this team reflect your coaching identity? Hey, Percy, um, you know, it's interesting. You know, you, you take a look at us and we're currently sitting in a good position. Um, and we talked about this. I think the spirit of where we need to get back to is, you know, enjoying what we're doing and having fun within that. And I think that's first and foremost for us is, you know, basketball is is what we do. It's not who we are. Um, our joy comes from from within, honestly, and nobody can take that away from us. But I think when we, we are at our best, when we're having fun and, you know, I'm those who know me, you know, I'm quiet. <laughs> but at the same time, when I have something to say, it's important people listen. And, you know, my leadership isn't going to be loud and boisterous, but it's going to be sharp. It's going to be dominant. It's going to be um unnecessary you know I I will be a servant leader um I, I played in this league for a long time and you know I played for great coaches I played alongside some great players and I understand um what 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 it what it takes what what players like what type of coaches players like and um I'm here to serve um I, I'll get out the way you know on the day-to-day -day, it's about teaching you know and obviously we're at elite level we have elite players here so I don't have to do a whole lot um, but I think, you know, to provide grade A uh, teaching and coaching on a day to day basis to continue to to challenge them, you know, though they are elite players, though we have elite players, I think um, they're yearning for that challenge. And for me, it's just important to stay the course, um, to stay sharp every day, um, to instill those values every day. And most importantly, to get back to enjoying what we're doing. Um, and that joy is what you will see on a day to day basis with the product, meaning um, the game. Sure. And then can I just get your thoughts on just being the first black coach in storm history and wow. maybe a thought or two about black women coaches in this league? Wow. Um, thank you for asking that. You know, I, I kind of did some research. So forgive me, I'm looking at my phone, but you, you, you talk about Pokey Chapman, Teresa Edwards, Jennifer Gillum, Carolyn Jenkins, Vicki Johnson, Trudy Lacey, Cynthia Cooper, Cheryl Miller, Carolyn Peck, Julie Russo, Amber Stocks, Carlene Thompson, Shell Daly, Jesse Kinlaw, Kathy Parson, Taj McWilliams Franklin, Denise Taylor, Penny Toller. Um, you know, they crawled so I could walk. <laughs> I sit on those shoulders. And for me, you know, it's important that I'm not um, a woman, I'm a black woman. And that's, you know, that I sit with that every day. And sometimes that can be a negative, you know, a double negative for me um, to be a woman and to be black, but I'm empowered in that there's value in that. Um, my experiences in that, um, you know, it, it shapes me to, to, it has molded me in that, and, and that is who I am. Um, I am super honored 
to hold this. I didn't even kind of realize that as I'm just kind of getting my mind around um, the process because it's it's been <laughs> expedited expedited in a way. Um, it's just you know I don't do things for a title. I don't do things for clout. I just do things to help others. I do things to have impact. And um, for me to be the first of something, um, that's amazing. That touches me. Um, but I don't, you know, I, I'm not moved by the things of this world, meaning I'm not moved by title. I'm not moved by money. I'm not moved by championship. I, I love to win, you know what I'm saying? But you know, what moves me is my impact. And I know that I have impact in um, saying that I'm a first of something. And I hold that dear to my heart. And Every day I will move in a way that it, that will honor that and honor these ladies' legacy that um, have paved the way for me to be here. That's awesome, Coach. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank, thanks, Percy. Uh, Doug Feinberg, go ahead, Doug. Hey, Coach, congratulations. And really well said that last uh, answer you gave, Percy. Um, I, I'm curious, if, can you walk us through the last 72 hours, how this all came about that Dan decided to step aside and tire and, and obviously you became the, the next coach or the current coach of the storm. I, to be honest with you, Doug, like I don't even remember the last 72 hours. It's just been a whirlwind and that's just, you know, the honest truth. Um, yeah. You know, we, we've been in, in this league for a long time. We know the rigors of, you know, being on the road, just playing tough schedules and, you know, the day to day, it is tough. Um, and so, you know, within the last few uh, hours or days, honestly, um, you know, we were in communication with ownership group and with Dan and understanding that um, this was eventually going to happen. Like this was the course of things. Um, but what was decided was that um, it was time. You know what I mean? And um, I, I don't want to speak for Dan because he's not here. But what I will say is Dan is a great man. And to sit alongside him these past few years and, you know, I played for him, but it's different when you work with somebody, you start to understand like why he did the things that he did, how he coaches the way he coaches and the things that he said. And I, um, I, I really gravitated toward just picking his brain and understanding and learning certain things about how to be a leader. And so, yeah, with that, it was kind of just time and he was just um, ready to pass the torch. And again, I just, I'm so happy that I have like the backing, the um, encouragement, the support from everyone. And he's, he's like the biggest supporter the other day when, you know, we played our game on Tuesday, he was the first person to call my phone and he was just so proud of me. You know what I mean? So um, that's kind of how it's been. I don't know if that was 72 hours or what, how, what it's been, Doug, but it's, it's been a lot. And again, just grateful for this opportunity. Thanks coach. Appreciate it. No problem. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Kevin Pelton, go ahead, Kevin. You mentioned the game on Tuesday night. How much does that experience help prepare you for taking over now? Yeah, it does. It prepares me a lot. So, you know, there, there are little, little nuances about the game as far as just like a longer timeout as a head coach and, you know, having how long the discussions can be with my um, assistants and things of that nature. And, you know, just little things that, that, you don't really think about, you know, in your assistant coaching role because you're so focused on your role. Um, but it was seamless because our, the team is amazing. Like I looked at in the huddle, they're looking at me, eyes locked on me, like, you got this, what do you want us to do? And from seeing that and feeling that, that kind of settled me in a little bit. Of course, you know, I had to get my feet wet and get my bearings a little bit and just understand that um, I was entrusted to to um to 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 lead us in a way and I, it's a it was an overtime game <laughs> you know Kevin it was like it wasn't just you know an, an easy game I'm you know the other thing that I'm understanding and realizing is like I have to look at the total game which as an assistant you know I can focus on the offense or whatever we need at that moment but to just be in sync with that but you know I, I was a player at the point guard position so that field is there that natural field is there now just all a matter of putting it together but um you know, I'm not going to always get it right, but to have those guys support me, those ladies support me, it means it means the world to me. Baptism by fire. Uh, thanks and congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Pepper, personally, go ahead, Pepper. 
Hi, Coach. Um, congratulations. I really appreciate what you said about being a Black female head coach for the Storm. So my question for you is, um, it means a lot um, to be a Black girl like me and to see um, Black women like you um, as head coach. So what does it mean to you to be a role model to girls like me? Awesome, Pepper. Good to see you again. It means the world to me. And I we discussed this the other day. Um, I grew up in LA and um, I grew up watching the WNBA. So I grew up watching Lisa Leslie, Mawadi Mabika, um, Tamika Dixon. These are all LA legends, in my opinion. Um, and, you know, it's one thing to to have goals, but it's one thing to to see someone who looks like you doing what you aspire to do. You know what I mean? And so, again, I don't take this this role lightly. I understand that I am in, um, I have an ability and a responsibility to be a role model in that way. And I'm I welcome it. You know, if you Pepper can look at me and say, hey, one day I would like to be a head coach of the Seattle Storm. You can do it because you see me do it. I think it's important for young Black girls to see um, women of color, Black women in leadership roles because you can understand you can be more than just a basketball player. You can be a GM. You can be a coach. You can own a team. You know what I mean? And in, and in that, it is our responsibility to lead you and show you the way um, and give you the blueprint so that you in turn can continue to aspire. That's what life is about. It's not about us and our selfish, you know, desires and needs. It's about impacting people on a day to day. Thank you so much. No problem. Thanks, Pepper. Uh, Jeff Brown, go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Noe, congratulations. Hey, Thank you. Uh, so dating back to 2018, you're winning the championship with the team. Could you have envisioned being the head coach just three years later? And no. uh, how, how proud are you? Um, today was interesting. There was this moment, like it was very surreal for me. And I'm like, is this happening? It, it's, it's sometimes it's like, am, am I dreaming? Is this real? You know what I mean? Be just, just because again, I don't really set out to be a head coach of a team. It's like very much what people see within me. And, you know, I'm super proud. The first call was to my mom. My mom is super woman to me. And she was just expressed how proud she was of me as well. Um, but yeah, in 2018, you know, obviously you guys know my transition. I, as a player, I was coaching at, in my high, at my high school, at my alma mater. And so 2018, I kind of took on that role as that player coach and just making sure everything was on point, making sure, sure Sue needed what, had, had what she needed, make sure our, our bench players and our young players had the guidance that they needed, make sure Jewel was on point, you know what I mean? So I took on that leadership role in that way. Um, never, ever would I have imagined that I'd be here just a short time later. You know, there were talks about it, you know, um, ownership saw that within me and that's why I'm here right now. But to be sitting as the head coach, no, it, it wasn't even on my radar, radar, honestly. And again, I'm just super proud, super honored to just be sitting here as the leader of this group. Awesome. And then, um, so with obviously Dan uh, stepping down, you moving up, um, are Gary and Ryan still going to be part of the staff? And are, are you guys looking to add another assistant this season? Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, Klopp is still with us. Ryan is still with us. Um, Perry will now be our assistant. And as you know, Perry was with us in 2018 as well. Um, he does a lot of our video coordinating um, and our player development as well. He also was with us in the bubble. So he's very familiar with what we do and um, very comfortable, you know, with our organization, with our players and all that. So a very seamless um, transition. Awesome. Thank you, Noe. No problem. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Christos. Go ahead, Christos. Hello, coach. Hello from Greece. Hope you are doing well. Hi. My question to you is, what what it mean for you to be a shell super a shell storm coach, and is it kind of a luxury or privilege or extra motivation or maybe a, a, a push for you to have the best player in the world and a living legend in your team? What it means for you? It means it makes my job easier. <laughs> You know, you, we talk about adding a coach. How about we say that Sue is a coach for us, a player coach in that way. And and obviously, Stewie is the best player on the planet, in my opinion. And I hope, hopefully, it better be in it, everybody's opinion. Um, those guys, though they are great 
in what they do, they still need to be challenged every day. They want to be coached and they want to be um, put in a situation where they they know that they can trust me. And, and so that's that that helps me to know that they they have my back in this process and they know um, that I'm do, willing to do whatever um, I need to do so that they feel good, so that our team feels good and that, that, that we're in the right place. We are a championship organization. Um, we have a high level of um, excellence here. Um, we have a great culture here. And so that's what makes it easy for me. You know, what we, what we started to cook up in 2017 and leading into 2018, it was, it was something that was, um, brewing before that. And what you saw was like a culmination of, um, culture leadership, like really each and every one of us loving each other and caring for one another. And that's another thing when the players, when our players, when my players know that, you know, I care about them and not just about them as basketball players, but about them as people, then I think they'll go even hard, harder for us and for, for the organization and for me. And I think that's important. So yeah, to, to, to circle back to your question, um, it makes it uh, like way easier for me to have their trust and to, to have the best players on the team for sure. Thank you very much. Have a great season. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Christos. Uh, Charles Holman, go ahead, Charles. Congratulations, Noel. How are you? Thank you. I'm well. Thank you. I know you've been asked a lot about your history points. So I want to add another point to you. You are the first Black. A uh, player that was drafted by Minnesota that also now is a WNBA head coach. Awesome. But I also want to ask you just to reflect, if you can, about just your part as part of the 25 year anniversary of the league, uh, playing in it and now coaching in it, and also has Ed given you a call yet? About <laughs> you know it. First and foremost, Ed Prohoski is my guy. You know, from my Minnesota days, him coaching me, and he is a living legend in Minnesota. I I talk to Ed Eddie, I call him on almost a day to day basis, or a few uh, you know game to game basis for sure. He's always sending me texts. He's always encouraging me, and he definitely I haven't got back to his message yet. Sorry, Eddie, but he is in my corner. And you, you if you guys know me, you guys know how much I love Ed and how much he supported me. Um, thanks Charles for for bringing that up and. Yeah, just honestly, as you as I kind of alluded to earlier, I grew up watching the WNBA. I was a fan. Like I, I would, I'm talking about when we were at the Forum in Inglewood watching the Sparks. My mom had season tickets for us, and then we moved to Staples. So I'm a student of the game, and I know that being a part of the league um, is a uh, privilege. You know what I mean? I don't take that for granted. Um, you know, to to watch the league and then be a part of it as a player and now lead as a coach. I mean, it, it's a full circle moment for me. Um, I love where the league has been, where it's going. Um, I love where we are from a standpoint of being able to support our players better. Um, I love the fact that we were in the bubble last year and able to talk about social justice issues. I love that, you know, we are using our platform to talk about the stuff that really impacts us as Black women, as women of color, as women as an entire league. Um, again, being the first of something, I don't, I don't wake up every day to strive to be the, to be the nothing but the best version of myself. And um, again, um, my Minnesota days helped cultivate like who I am and, you know, being able to play for the league and coaching the league is just, again, an honor. I, I, I know I'm repeating myself, but I, I will say that <laughs> for the rest of the day, it's an honor. Congratulations and tell Dan hello for me. I will. Thank you. Thanks, Charles. Uh, Matt Cockins, go ahead, Matt. Hey, coach. Uh, most of the time when a, a coaching change is made, it's because something wasn't going right with the team. In this situation, you're coming off a championship. You guys are in first place. Just curious if that adds any pressure at all, what you think about inheriting a situation where everyone's kind of already expecting you guys to win. No pressure at all. You know, we have cultivated this um, culture, you know, so to speak. And I'm going to be honest, when you have Sue Bird and Rihanna Stewart and Jewel Lloyd in your corner, <laughs> 
can't go wrong. You know what I mean? And obviously the support of the rest of the team, but you know, my, again, sometimes my job is to get out the way, um, but to make sure we are prepared and focused and, and on task because you know, it is day to day. We know this league, anybody can beat you in any given day. So it's about, you know, being a step of he- ahead, um, being ready to battle every night and understanding you win by one point, you win by 20 points, a win is a win. Let's move on, let's grow, let's get better um, and just carry this on into hopefully um, postseason. And with our, our goal is always to win a championship. All right, thanks, Matt. And uh, Masvida, go ahead, go ahead and wrap us up. I think we're running a little low on time here. So uh, go ahead, Masvida, and we'll wrap this all up. Thanks, thanks, Jeff. Hey, Coach, just you talked about servant leadership, mindfulness, teaching, and making an impact. And then you mentioned Eddie and then your mom. I'm wondering, and I know there's a long list and you might miss somebody, but who else had an impact as, as you continually grew, uh, grew and grow? I mean, I, I go back to my first little league coaches, Jerry Chambers. He was an NBA player. Robert Ambers was my, fo- my first coach. Um, going into my high school years, Lisa Cooper, my principal, Miss Libin, she gave me an opportunity to come back and coach at Bishop Montgomery High School in Torrance. You know, I, I could go to UCLA with Annie Myers, always um, empowering me, my coach, Kathy Olivier, Pam Walker. Um, you know, I can go to the league. You know, I, I play for Don Zierd and I play for Michael Cooper. I play for Sandy Brondello. I play for Jennifer Gillum. I play for Brian Agler. I play for Trudy L- Lacey. Like, you know, all these people along the way I've learned from, you know, we can go overseas. I play for Pokey Chapman. <laughs> you know, I play for all these wonderful coaches. Um, I played with and alongside Tina Thompson, one of my good friends today. I, I played alongside Lisa Leslie. I played alongside, uh, uh, Lauren, Jack, like the list, list goes on on Diana Taurasi. And so, you know, everybody at every stop has really impacted me in a way. I played um, in the league at the point guard position. We understand point guard position is the extension of the coach. So that's the value of my experience and that learning and growing as a player in what I do. Um, and yeah, obviously, let me circle back to my family. It's my my mom, my sister, my uncle. Um, they, they're my support system. And, you know, I, I don't want to miss anyone, but everyone has had a hand um, along the way. And I'm super appreciative of that. It's a blessing. It's a blessing to be here. Thank you. No problem. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. We really appreciate your time here. Um, we will let you step out here. We'll bring in Sue Bird here in just a moment. Um, but once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And like I said, we'll have Sue Bird here in just a second. Oh, there she is. Bright light. All right, we got Subert here. Subert is ready to go. If you have a question for Sue, hit that hand raise button on the reactions thing. And once again, we'll try with uh, one question, one quick follow up, and we'll start with Percy. Go ahead, Percy. Awesome. Hey, Sue, I'm just, um, what kind of disruption is it to lose your coach uh, six, six games into the season? And uh, what, what, things can you guys do as players to help Noel through this big transition? You know, to be honest, I, I've never experienced this, so I don't really know what kind of disruption it's going to be. Um, what, what I do know is um, we have experience that we can, you know, pull from, which is what we had going in the wobble. Obviously Dan couldn't be with us there. 
and you had Klopp, you had Noel, you had Perry, um, Ryan from afar. So a lot of the pieces that were in place then are the same pieces now, and they already have great chemistry. They already kind of have a good vibe amongst each other. And, and as players, we're, we're used to them being the ones to, to coach us. You know, we got a little bit of a taste of that the other day against Connecticut when, when Dan went to his son's graduation. So like I said, we just have experience to pull from. Um, but I think we just take it one day at a time and we don't necessarily overthink it. You know, it, it, yeah. it kind of, it's one of those situations that is what it is and you just got to take it as it comes. I think for Noe, you know, we all trust her. We all have great relationships with her. She's beyond ready. And I think um, we're already off to a good start. We had a great day today. And, you know, now a new season, I guess, for us begins tomorrow. Hey, and Ben, I know I'm going to come to you for my sort of uh, WNBA historic perspective. Um, just what does it mean for this uh, sort of franchise to hire its first Black coach and then for, you know, this league to hire another female black coach as well. Yeah. Um, obviously I think it's amazing. I think it's a, um, a step that's been needed and a step that will probably open more doors, you know, for, for more women, for more former players, for people of color, you know, all of that. And, and Noe kind of embodies all of that. And, and what she also embodies is, um, a player who had a long successful career, who, by nature of experience, just has a ton of knowledge under her belt. And I totally understand that when, when you have the head coach title attached to your name, it changes some things. Now the buck stops with you and that, that can, you know, that's something you have to get used to and adjust to and being in game and subbing and decisions, all of that stuff. But that comes with time, what Noe has. And I think what a lot of former players are starting, what we're starting to see as they, as they make that transition to coaching is this level of experience and knowledge that you can't teach the things that Noe has, the things that a lot of former players have, you just can't teach. And to circle back on where I was going with that was, I think what we're starting to see now is the WNBA was almost too young 15 years ago to have these players with these long successful careers where they've played in the WNBA, they've played for multiple coaches, they've played overseas. Maybe they've had national team experiences, whatever the case may be. And with that is just a ball of knowledge and a wealth of experience. And now we're finally starting to see those players become assistant coaches, become head coaches. And that's, I think that's the path that, that we've all kind of been waiting for to, to, for someone to start to like forge that path. And now we're starting to see it. And, and Noe's just another example of that. Um, so I think it's amazing. I think we're going to see more of it. I have zero doubt about that. There you go. Putting things in perspective. Thanks. No Thanks, Percy. <laughs> uh, Doug, go ahead. Doug Feinberg. Hey, Sue. I'm curious if it helps since there will be growing pains, so to speak, that there is a veteran group. I mean, you're a veteran, Stewie's a veteran, Jules a veteran. There's, there's a group here that kind of knows what's going on. Does that help you guys if there are growing pains in a, with a position, a new position for Noe? Um, yeah, I mean, if, if anything, I, you know, to be honest, the last couple of years, I think we've all gotten comfortable with it being all hands on deck and, you know, us, us as players being empowered to, to use our experience, to use our knowledge, to help, um, I think from, you know, from Noe's standpoint, being an assistant, she's been empowered to, to use her voice in, in, at different moments, um, whether it's in practice, in game. Um, so we're, we've all kind of, to get to this moment, it's, it's all already been happening. So none of what's going to happen, I think, in, in the remainder of this season is, is new to us. Um, again, it's based on relationships. That's what this is. That's what all of this is. We hear it all the time. It's becoming a little bit of a, you know, a cliche, but that's all sports is. It's relationships. Um, it's, it's building trust, building respect, and then everything just seems to fall into place in terms of, of roles and, 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 you know, how it all fits. And I feel like right now, given everything I've already touched on, you know, previous seasons, our wobble experience, what's been going on so far this season, I think it's all going to fall into place. Doesn't mean it's not gonna, you know, like you said, have some growing pains that's to, to be expected, but I do think we're, um, we're, we're all ready. Um, to help Noe, and we're all ready to be guided by Noe. Sue, if I can follow up on a different subject, since we're closing out Mental Health Awareness Month, and obviously I'm sure you know what's going on over in 
France with Naomi Osaka pulling out. I mean, you're a veteran athlete. You do media very well for many years. What are your thoughts on what's going on, obviously, in a sad situation that she had to withdraw from the French Open? Yeah, I mean, I fully support Naomi and, and the things that she's talking about. And, um, you know, it's important for, for people like her who have the platforms or has the platform that she has to speak on these things, because I don't I think what people don't understand is that this is not the exception to the rule. I think a lot of people feel the way Naomi does. And I think her speaking about it is now going to give confidence to others to speak up about how they feel and how, you know, in this case, it's media, how media might, might impact them negatively. Um, I understand and respect that, you know, telling athletes stories is the job of the media that connect her to, to the public. And it's a big part of what makes professional sports go, but there's nothing wrong with, with taking a step back. And, and if a player, you know, and again, it's not just going to be her, there's going to be many others, um, to follow suit. Um, you know, if a player can, can start that conversation and we can all take a step back, take a step back and reset what the relationship looks like, what's acceptable, what's not. And, and of course, always putting everybody's mental health first, um, you know, this can just change some things. It doesn't mean it has to go away completely, but I think we can reevaluate. We, we have to, that's, that's kind of where we are in a lot of different things in this country right now. And, and this is just one of them because, um, you know, you think you look at obviously what Naomi is talking about, you look at what happened in terms of um, different fan reactions in the NBA. I mean, I don't even know if reactions is the right word, but clearly we need a reset. Clearly something's off in this relationship and this dynamic. Thanks, Sue. Appreciate it. No problem. Good stuff. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Kevin Pelton, go ahead, Kevin. Hey, Sue. Was it clear when you were playing with Noe that she had the potential and the ability to become a head coach in the league? And then you mentioned more than ready. What's, what have you kind of seen lately that convinced, has convinced you of that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, our last year playing together in 2018, there were multiple times. So she was a teammate multiple times where, you know, maybe we're in a timeout, we're about to walk onto the floor and she's like, Hey, you might want to run this play because this team is doing this. I'm like, Oh, good idea. I mean, countless times. Um, and that's just one example. Um, so I think when I say more than ready, it, it comes from these little glimpses that, that I've gotten, you know, with, in terms of just the little nuggets she might give me throughout a game. Um, I think now that she's been in this assistant role, it, it'll come in the, you know, it'll come in the example of a play to run, um, a sub to make, um, things to look for adjustments on defense across the board. And you can't always teach these things. The feel that Noe has for the game you can't teach. I was joking with her about it. Actually. I'm like, it's kind of like when they talk about tall people and I can't teach height. I was like, what Noe has, it's really hard to teach. Cause it's a feel it's a feel. And I think for her, you know, she'll be the first to tell you that she's, you know, on the quiet side, but that doesn't mean she's not, you know, seeing everything, observing everything, taking it all in. She doesn't miss a beat. Um, and I think we've all been witness to that. It's probably just people outside of our inner circle that, that haven't really seen that of her, but it's, 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 she's been there behind the scenes the whole time. So she's, she's more than ready. I think it'll just be about, you know, getting used to doing media with you guys all the time and being the first one to talk in, in the huddles and the first one to address us, you know, pre-practice and post-practice, all those little things that, that come with coaching um, are now added to her plate. So she's going to have to figure out how to balance that, of course, but the stuff you can't teach, she has, and that's a great starting point for anybody. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, Jeff Brown, go ahead, Jeff. Hey, Sue, in recent years, we've seen players like Noel and uh, Crystal Lanehorn retire and then given prominent positions within the organization. And I guess, what does that say about the franchise? Yeah, I mean, I think this franchise sees the, the bigger picture in things. I don't think they make any decisions in a vacuum, they're, they're fully aware of, you know, the implications of things and the long-term impact. And I think they always have that in mind, even when they're making the day-to-day, -day, you know, decisions. And this is just another example, because when Noe became an assistant in 2019, you know, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, obviously I'm not in the room for these conversations. So I don't know if somebody said to her, like specifically, this is so you can become a head coach, but you could feel it. You could feel that this was the storm investing in somebody and, and trying to put them in a position to gain knowledge and experience um, firsthand so that in a couple of years, 
maybe something like this could happen, you know? So it's not, you know, I, I, using the word groomed is kind of weird, but at the same time, I just think she was put in a position that if she wanted to become a head coach, this would be, you know, just kind of like the natural progression of things. Um, but you can see that type of, of thought, um, in a lot of the decisions that, that this franchise makes. And then uh, just just touch on what Coach Dan Hughes has meant to this organization over the past few years. Yeah, I mean, Dan, when when he got here in 2018, we were a team that, you know, we just needed, we needed the right voice, we needed the right guidance. And I think Dan, um, he understood that, you know, he, he's a guy that didn't really coach with, with ego. He just wanted to win and he wanted to help put his players in, in the best positions possible to be successful. And he did that in, in his time here, you know, obviously, um, last year was a little different because of the wobble, but you know, his fingerprints are still all over that, that year, uh, all over 2020. Um, so obviously we're, we're all thankful for, for the time that, that Dan was here. And, you know, for me personally, hopefully, you know, myself, Stewie, Jewel, some other people, maybe, um, we'll get to play for him one, one more time with the Olympics. For us, it hasn't been named yet, so TBD. Um, but I think it's a, a great way for him to, you know, kind of make that, I guess, transition. I don't know what the right word is um, from WNBA to be able to still coach the Olympic team, and then whatever he decides to do after that, I'm sure he'll stay connected to to basketball in some way, shape, or form. You know, just because someone's not a head coach doesn't mean that they uh, they're not going to be involved. Um, and I know Dan is that passionate about women's basketball, and I, I could see that, I could feel that in in his time here. Awesome. Thank you, Sue. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, Christos, go ahead, Christos. Hello, Sue. Hope you're doing well. My, my question to you is, uh, you have a new coach right now. How do you approach that uh, situation? And do you feel like more responsible to make a step up, uh, lead your team by example, be more vocal in the locker room? How do you approach that? If, if I'm more vocal, I mean, I don't even know <laughs> at this point. I don't think that's possible. Um, no, I mean, I, I kind of touched on this before this is, and, and Dan actually, you know, said it in, in, in his, um, I guess in his press release or in some of his quotes, he's been really helping Noe and we all got a taste of, of the staff of Noe, of Klopp, of Perry. Um, and then again, you know, Ryan wasn't in the wobble, but he was also helping from afar. So with those four, we've all kind of tasted what it's like to be coached by them. So in, in some sense, even though obviously the, the, the coaching staff has changed. It's, it's a lot of similar things, a lot of similar voices, you know, it's our styles, not changing. It's not like we got a brand new staff and we got to learn new offenses. It's, it's nothing like that. And so it's just this, it's a, it's a nice little, um, I guess, natural progression to, to, to just continue what we've been doing, to be honest. So I don't think anybody's role is going to change just in the staff, of course, but in terms of players, everything's going to be pretty much the same for us. You know, it's just having, um, like I said, Noe, Noe being the, the head of the ship now. And the follow-up for you personally, to be able to fight for another one championship, to be reigning champs, to be the team to beat the other teams in the league, what it means for you and how refreshing is that at this point of your career? To have the X on your back? Um, I don't know if refreshing is the right word. Refreshing, yes. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Um, yeah, I mean... The, for me personally, you know, I never, I never really thought that, that, that my career would end the way that it seems to be trending towards, um, meaning, you know, just a couple of years ago we were rebuilding and I never thought I would get back to the playoffs. I never thought I'd get back to the finals. I never thought I'd be on the team that was quote the team to beat. So I enjoy every second of it. Win or lose at this point, I am on borrowed time. You know, in a lot of ways, I, I physically should not be here. I do all the things I can to make sure I am here. But, you know, there's, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of obstacles within that, a lot of challenges as you get older. And so I just feel really lucky every time I do get to step on the floor. And the fact that, you know, we're, we're starting to gel and we're starting to become a, a team. Obviously, after losing a lot of pieces, there were some question marks there, but you can sense, um, so I'm just really thankful that I get the chance to, to, to maybe compete for a championship, you know, and, and believe me, what, what I don't even know what our record is. I know it's something in one. I'm not high on that. That could change 
you know, overnight. So I don't even think of it in that way. I just feel like I can tell from our team, we are getting better. We still have to get Katie Lou back. So there's, you know, another player we're going to have to kind of fit in, but you know, if we do this right, we should be putting ourselves in a position to compete for a championship. And that's really all you can ask for in this league. Thank you very much. Thanks, Christos. Uh, Masvida, why don't you wrap us up one more time here, Masvida, go ahead. Yep, absolutely. Sue, so you've won a lot. The organization's won a lot. They know he's won a lot. And just going back to what you're saying, how comforting is it for to have someone who's committed in terms of winning and what it takes to, you know, the, the prep and all that winning. How yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, winning, it, a lot of people don't talk about, it's a skill, you know, it's, it's, it's a skill because, and I've been on teams like this. If, 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 you know, you get on a team that starts to lose, you start to get used to losing and it, it becomes this hurdle that you can't really get over. And I think what we've established in the last couple of years is, regardless of what we do on the court, whether we play well or play poorly, if the ball's going in or it's not, we understand what it takes to win. And that doesn't just start with players that starts with coaches as well. And no, he's a big part of that. And a lot of the things I was addressing earlier in terms of her feel, we've all seen it. And so we trust it. And when you have that trust, you just, you feel like when you step on the court, you always have a chance to win. Like I said, even if you go out there and, and you're having a, an off night, you still feel like you're going to have a chance to win because you trust the process of, and, and you trust what you're doing out there. And that starts, like I said, with the coaches and then it trickles down into the player's mindset, but it, it's a skill. It really is. It's, it's something it's hard to work on, but it's something you have to, to work on and it becomes a part of you. Some people say winning is a learned habit. I mean, now we're going down a whole different road. I'm not trying to say that you can like read a book and learn how to do it. And then boom, it has to come through experience. It has to come through. In my opinion, it's, it's really when the shit hits the fan, it's, it's just ha being in situations where the shit is hitting the fan constantly and figuring out ways to, to get out of it. That's that to me is, is when you develop that, that mindset. Um, when you start to win the games where you play poorly like at Dallas, I don't think aside from Stewie and then some people in different pockets, I don't think we played particularly well as a team, but we found a way to win. And once you start to, to, to feel what that feels like, you understand what needs to be done. You understand that you can't let up 40 minutes is a long time. And that's what I mean by it becoming a skill. It becomes a part of you. It becomes a part of your mindset. Um, I don't think you can go read a book though. That's not going to happen. You're muted. <laughs> Sorry, I meant learned in his experience, not like go to uh, you know, library 101 and say, this is how you win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. My bad. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. All right. Hey, thanks, Sue, so much for joining us. Thank you all for joining us today. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow night. We'll have uh, our game against Indiana at 7.30 p.m. on ESPN2. Uh, Coach Noe will do her pregame. A conversation. First one is head coach at 5.45 p.m. We hope you'll join us for that as well. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have a good one. Thanks, Jeff.